Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented by PointsBet. Use promo code CHGO when you sign up to get two risk-free bets up to $2,000, but that's not it. If you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership. That unlocks all of our web content, and you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO Locker. That's two grand in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO Locker, all for making a $50 or more First-time deposit at PointsBet. I'm Jay Zawoski. You see Greg Boyson on screen. Mario Tirabasi still out with upper respiratory injury. Today is a big day on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast because while the Chicago Blackhawks are not in the playoffs, the Rockford Ice Hogs are. So we want to bring in our buddy Joey Z. Joseph Z- 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 I, 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 See, I'm thinking about it too much. I told you, you jinxed yourself. Zuckcheski. Oh, I, I practiced it and practiced it and practiced it. And as soon as I had to say it, I butchered it. And as a as a Polish guy, I feel shame. I was gonna say you're a fellow Z. That should have just been like fluid, I, I perfect, have thought, but, no, Joe. The problem is I have thought about it so much, <laughs> and I'm I want to give you the due respect. And I knew the more I think about it, the worse it's gonna go. Follow Joseph on Twitter at Joey Z Radio. Um, we're happy to have you, man. Thank you for taking the time out. I know it's a super busy day. Uh, and we are uh, grateful that you had some time to join us. And, and let's talk about the, the Little Hawks, the Rockford Ice Hawks today. No, thank you guys for having me. This is awesome. It's great to catch up with you. It's been a little bit, but uh, no, today's a perfect day. As crazy as it might be, it's game one of a playoff series, and we haven't had playoff hockey in many, many years. So to get this rolling today is, is a long time coming, and, and it's exciting. Not only for the front office staff, the players, the coaches, it just resonates through the entire organization. So thank you guys for having me. Uh, we love it, Joe. Thanks. Good to see you. Talk to you again. Um, looking forward to getting to the BMO this weekend. It's going to be great. Playoff hockey. Can't beat it. Blackhawks fans, you know, <clears throat> I would say it's fair to say most of them don't pay attention religiously to what goes down in Rockford. They'll probably check the scores or whatnot. So you're a guy. Nobody has literally watched more Rockford Ice Hawks <laughs> hockey than you have this year. So you're the perfect guy to come in and kind of give everybody, catch everybody up to speed, let us know what's going on. And, of course, when you talk about the Ice Hogs, the Blackhawks fans immediately, first name pops up, Lucas Reichel. You've got to see all of his games, set the Ice Hogs franchise rookie record for points in a season. You know, some fans in Chicago, from what we saw here, start to get a little worried because, you know, he didn't win a Hart Trophy in his first game in the NHL. <laughs> What kind of a season did you have? What kind of progression did you see for him from October heading into this first playoff game? Well, patience is always the name of the game, right, when it comes to player development, and everybody paces at a different route and at a different time frame. But for Lucas Reichel to come in, I mean, at the beginning of the season, and this was a kid coming over from Germany, very first time playing North American hockey, other than maybe a couple of visits here and there and, and rookie camps and so forth. But for him to come in and, and and try and get the lay of the land as quickly as he did was was impressive. And like many rookies, you know, it took a couple of games to get going. But once he did, boy, oh, boy, you mentioned he set the new Ice Hogs rookie all-time scoring record and passing Vinny Hinstrona and Estroza from a couple of years ago and he was the ice Hogs rookie of the year player fin- finished fifth in rookie scoring in the entire american hockey league so kind of shows the progression that he has made both offensively uh, and on the defensive side as well but for lucas to to show that offensive flair has been fantastic and he's gonna be a guy the ice Hogs are counting on for the postseason run especially with the offense being spread out as much as it has been here these last couple of games he's gonna be a guy that's re- relied upon to to help lead that charge he's a great passing guy when he shoots the puck he's fantastic there too but he loves to set up his teammates and for right and, and many of his teammates, they're going to be relied upon from the opening puck drop tonight for game one against the Texas Stars throughout the postseason run. Yeah, I think he's the guy we're the most interested in because at this point he feels certainly like the biggest Blackhawks prospect. And we we did have some glimpses, but I think Lucas would admit that he had, tr- I don't want to say trouble, but finding the pace, finding his game at the NHL level. And every time he get, would get sent back to Rockford, you'd see he would start filling up the net fill in the stat sheet again and and, you know Derek King has sort of said the biggest thing he needs to do is is get bigger and fill out his frame and when he does he'll start to look more like the player he's been in Rockford and you mentioned him breaking the rookie scoring record in your time Joe in Rockford where does Lucas Reichel stack up in terms of like the best ice hogs you've seen overall because frankly Rockford's been sort of cheated of the Hawks top prospects because so many have come straight to the league 
What the last biggest one that I can think of off the top of my head that had any kind of time in Rockford was was Kurt, when Kirby Doc was here when he was on a, a rehab assignment before making his full time jump to the Chicago Blackhawks, and that was right at the very beginning of what would be going on three seasons ago. But now, I mean, you get guys coming through the system that are starting to get the the full experience, the full pro experience, which is really kind of the change in and and what we've seen a lot lately is not just Lucas Reichel, but guys like especially the defensive prospects we've seen up and down all season long, like an Alec Regula, Isaac Phillips, uh, Mike Harmon a forward, jumping back to that group, Josiah Slavin. Um, I mean, I can really rattle off, you know, uh, pretty much the entire ISOC roster. And they're all guys that have, you know, split time or gotten some time here or there with the Chicago Blackhawks. But for Lucas's case, I think it was an opportunity. The first time he came back, we caught up with him and he said, you know, he felt comfortable here. He was able to get into a rhythm, able to get to know his teammates, get the lay of the land, what was expected of him. And then going up to the bright lights of the National Hockey League and, and of course, the Chicago Blackhawks, he said he felt hesitant. He felt like he had to be a little bit more reserved, a little bit more conservative. But when he comes back down to the American Hockey League, he's right there making plays, taking chances. And, and taking risks with that, too. Sometimes it pays off, and those are the highlights you see. Sometimes not so much, and the coaching staff might get a chance to work with him, too. So I think it's once he gets into a rhythm and, and he gets that that flow going to his game, he was able to pick up his first National Hockey League point the last go-around with the Blackhawks. If he's able to build that into a, a consistent stretch, you're going to see more and more of that from him as he continues to grow. And, and the playoffs, playing meaningful hockey and games that come down the line, like playoff hockey, is going to be huge for him to get that first taste because not only just him, the Ice Hawks have the third youngest team in the American Hockey League. And it's a team, it's a team that for many, many of these guys that are playing tonight in game one against the Texas Stars, they're playing in their first professional playoff game ever. Yeah. So it's going to be a taste of a lot for these guys to handle meaningful games. What does it mean to be consistent shift after shift, period after period, and with so much on the line at stake too. So, uh, I mean, starting with Lucas Reichel all the way down the roster, a lot of these guys are going to get that uh, that growth and development uh, under, their, uh, under their belts and add to their resume before next summer. If Lucas Reichel needs to get bigger this summer, then he should just move into the CHGO studios <laughs> uh, with all the candy and IPAs in the fridge. He'll put on a few pounds real quick. Um, but speaking about Reichel, you mentioned that he's also a really great playmaker. And there's mm -hmm. two guys on that team that have really benefited from playing with them. And talk about Michael Tepley and Andre Altibarmaki and two guys that started off pretty slow. But then once that Christmas break happened and they got back after the COVID pause and all that stuff and they got paired on the same line with like their seasons took off and they've been huge as far yeah. as his playoff push, as far as bringing that secondary score. What could you talk about those two guys who may not be on a lot of on the radar of a lot of Blackhawks fans, but the way they progressed, those are names we're probably going to talk about come training camp. Well, for Michael Tepley, he was the Ice Hawks' most improved player of, of the season. He only got a small snippet of games last year, as did Altamar Makin in the shortened COVID-19 season. That was really all about focusing on development and getting used to a North American style of game. Both him and Andre and Lucas, for that matter, coming over to see overseas and playing their first North American season. So they had plenty to get used to with the smaller ice service. And you talk about guys making plays, they thrive on that overseas because you have the wider ice. You can take pucks wide a little bit more. You have a little bit more freedom to, to make and, and maybe search for a secondary or third opportunity to make a pass but for those two guys especially Michael Tepley once he as you mentioned hit that Christmas break went right around the hump and, and was able to produce it, it all it took was one and it was kind of funny we were catching up with numerous coaching staff and 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 team personnel of just like once Tepley gets that first AHL goal first AHL point really rolling along he's just going to take off and boy that certainly was the case same thing for Andre Altbermaki and, and even at the tail end of the season for Andre a nice little five game goal scoring streak six game point streak for him to wrap up the year when they're paired up with Mike uh, with Lucas Reichel a guy that makes plays and finds his teammates for, with great passes and you get two guys that can finish like Michael Tepley, Tepley and Andre Altbermaki I mean it was it's a, an exciting matchup and, and with the offense sputtering and and being moved around as much as it was they haven't always been on the same line together and of course moving guys up and down between ice hogs and chicago is a, a big part, part of that too but when those three are together a lot of fun happens on the ice who are some of the other ice hogs that have not had time in chicago uh that we should keep an eye on as the series moves on i know there's a bunch of guys who are down in the entire season in rockford who have not had nhl sniffs yet and maybe never will who are some of those players that have gotten rockford to the point they are now well, for guys that haven't played at all this year with with uh, Chicago, and but that's in the system, and a guy that I've really liked his growth in his game is, is Ford Evan Barrett, a guy that plays with a lot of grit to his contest. I think a lot of fans can probably compare him to maybe a Brandon Hagel, a little bit of, of, of sandpaper and, and getting to the dirty areas of the ice, forcing turnovers, being aggressive. And he's not afraid to get underneath your skin, too, and it's it's shown. Um, he sits on top of the crease. He, he's made a living up there. So many redirections and deflection goals for him this year, and and, and he's taken a beating in, in the process of doing so. So I think 
Devin Barrett's a guy to keep an eye on. Um, some guys that have gotten some time with Chicago over, whether it will be last year, a little bit this year, guys like Mike Hardman, Josiah Slavin, similar styles of that work ethic game, that nitty gritty contest. Slavin, in his case, I mean, he led the Ice Dogs in scoring in the month of April going into the postseason, and he was far and away the best player in terms of plus minus for the plus 18. Now, I know that stack can kind of, you know, fluctuate here and there, but he was far and away blowing out the next closest teammate of him. So you talk about guys with great two-way work ethics and, and being able to contribute offensively and defensively. Evan Barrett, Josiah Slavin, Mark, Mike Harmon, those kind of guys are, are who you're looking for coming into the summer in camp. We've talked about the guys up front, the guys on the back end. Those are the, we've heard a lot of those names. We've seen a lot of those guys. You know, Alec Gula was a guy that came up and impressed in Chicago. Uh, Jakob Galvis is another guy. Short stint up here, but so, really, really solid. Good. Kind of out of the blue, it felt like too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Isaac Phillips is a guy that I personally am a huge fan of. He's I love his game and such a great kid. I think he's going to be a huge fan favorite when he comes to Chicago to stay. But two guys that Hawks fans wanted to see a lot of in Chicago, but the team obviously went more patience and more development. We're talking about Ian Mitchell, Wyatt mm-hmm. Kalnuck. Both had really good seasons playing in the entire season, essentially, in the AHL, especially offensively. Ian Mitchell, I believe, tied for third on the points uh, for points on the team, second in power play goals. Wyatt Kelnick has become a, a really good power play quarterback as well. What can you tell us about the development of those two guys and how that may progress into an NHL future? Well, for Ian Mitchell, I mean, he's been fantastic, especially he was paired up with Isaac Phillips at, at most times on the power play. Him and Alec Regula just make quick work of the puck at the points, too. And and for Ian, he got a little banged up towards the end of the season, and he's been in and out of the lineup here uh, in recent games. But it looks, like, uh, it looks like everything's on track for him to get things going for game one starting tonight against Texas and even moving forward even later on the series if he needs more time. But for Ian, I mean, he's made major strides. Another guy coming from the college game last season, getting a feel for it, using that development season in Rockford a chance to get his feet wet instead of just you know, riding out a year, or maybe not playing as many minutes, getting as much experience at the national hockey level here in Rockford. And the same goes for him and Wyatt Kalnick too. I mean, you can play in all scenarios, whether it's five on five power play penalty kill. They're also relied upon four on four. So they get all that and they get it in repetition too, which I think is another big key for a lot of these guys is that it's not just one game or two games. And then they sit out of the lineup for a couple of, you know, a game or two or a week or two, and then they go back in, whether if they're in the national hockey, League. but here in Rockford, it's every single night. And for the ice Dogs, they played a lot of hockey in a short amount of time. So, I mean, 15 games alone in the month of April going into the playoffs. It's a game every other day. So for these guys to be consistent and do that night after night has only helped them, and, and for those two especially. And then Ian Mitchell, you mentioned leading the team in, in certain point categories among blue liners. He was one of the league leaders in the American Hockey League among defensemen in overall points and power play points and power play goals. So for guys like that, I mean, you see it on the stat line, but at the same time, when, when they get that repetition in there, I mean, practice makes perfect, right? And it's, it's helped these guys uh, tremendously this season. It's got to be an exciting time for you knowing that the next few years the Hawks prospects that matter are going to spend time in Rockford and they're going to develop properly and they're going to you're going to get to call some of these guys that are going to lead and be big parts of the next dynasty in Chicago and you know I know um, there's Hawks fans who are thirsty for playoff hockey who are looking forward to traveling down to Rockford for these playoffs and and I'm sure there'll be a lot of interest in the years to come as top prospects play there. We saw when the 20, you know, when the World Series Cubs were being built, more Cubs fans than ever were going to Iowa to see Chris Bryant and Javier Baez and all these up up and coming guys. What's the fan experience like at the BMO? Tell tell people what they can expect if they come out to an Ice Hogs game in Rockford. It's intense and it's loud and it's a lot of fun. And uh, Greg can speak to that. He's been to a couple of games where, you know, that crowd, it's, it's a smaller intimate environment, a little bit north, you know, more north of, of 6,000 people. And, and then when you get people in the standing room only, it only gets uh, louder and louder. And then you get the roof right down on top of you. It's exciting. And we saw that a few times this season, even, even last weekend, we had a sellout crowd for our final uh, season finale and fan appreciation night against the Chicago Wolves. It's energetic and you can sense the tension. You can sense the excitement and it, it, it feels like the, the players on the ice feel it. I feel it in the broadcast booth because I'm ready to run through, you know, five different walls at the same time. And then when that first goal is scored, you can't hear yourself think. And then from that, it just it's just a wave of positivity across the fan base, across the team, across the staff. And it makes for an absolutely incredible environment. It's one of the loudest buildings I've ever been to when it's going full force. And when the Ice Sox score, I mean, they got their chants, they got their songs, they got they got their traditions here in the state line for many, many, many seasons long before I was even here. And, and to see those kick up and ramp up again, it brings 
fans of, of, of all ages back together. And, and uh, I mean, the state line community is, has loved this team for so long and, and to have them have playoff hockey again for the first time in many years after last year's shortened season with no fans in the building, the abrupted, you know, 1920 season that came to a close and unfortunately wasn't able to be picked back up. So, I mean, this is really the first playoff hockey that Ice Hawks fans have been able to see since 2018 when they went to the Western Conference Finals against actually the team they're playing in the first round here in the Texas Stars. So to have that energy back in our community and, and back in the BMO is, is going to be electrifying tonight. We've got a question in the comments from Brad. He says, how would one watch or stream the Hogs game tonight? Uh, sign up for AHL TV. They've got a package right now. I think it's fourteen ninety nine for the entire playoffs. Um, obviously, that supports the league, which is great. Um, and you can get every AHL playoff game right there. You can stream it. I know there's an app. Uh, if you've got a Roku stick, there's an AHL TV app on there. Uh, which would make me think there's one for the fire stick as well. There is. is. Yeah, so um, AHL TV is the way to go. Get that playoff subscription, and you'll be able to watch. uh, You'll be able to watch not just the Ice Hawks, but every team in the AHL playoffs. And then during the season, if it so interests you, you can buy a one-team-only streaming package. So you could pay to have just every Rockford game. So the options are out there for you. So I I got my subscription. I'm ready to go tonight, locked and loaded. And uh, that's the best way to do it. Can't wait. Yes, make sure you're putting on the home feed so you get the Joey's <laughs> yeah. call. Um, we don't want that that Texas call by any means. Um, no, and I mean, if and it, like you said, there's the team only packages you can jump in, and, and all three games of this first round series are going to be here at BMO Harris Bank Center, so it would be the home feed. And, but if you're traveling or and you can't watch the games too, we have a live audio stream that you can pretty much pick up anywhere, whether it's on your phone, on your computer, or in your car as well through ricedogs.com. That we'd love to have you join in. And and yeah, tonight's game's at seven o'clock, so we'll get up, you know up and running around six thirty or so, and get you all the latest news. So yeah, it, it's going to be a blast tonight so i hope you can join in i would highly recommend any of our blackhawk fans that want to go check out a game this week make the trip it's not that it's it's a little over an hour to get there if you're coming from chicago it's a great building for hockey It's, it's small it's compact i've watched many games literally from the last row of the arena and it's still a great sight line there's literally not a bad seat in the house um great atmosphere and i'm sure it's going to be packed and it's going to be loud and you know it, it's the most bang for your buck you're going to get the value that you get for your ticket i know the blackhawks talk a lot about making more each attaching more value to each ticket well you're going to get more value than you're paying for when you go to an ice hogs game i can attest to that so i recommend uh heading out there if you can game one's tonight game two is friday night at seven o'clock if necessary, there'll be a third and final game Saturday at 6, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully uh, by Saturday you guys are, are pre-gaming for your good old friends, the Chicago Wolves. <laughs> but if need be, we'll be there for that one as well. Um, so we've talked a lot about the Ice Hogs. You've also seen the Stars eight times this year. It's been a very even season series <laughs> between the two. They split the eight games, four and four, two wins on the road, two wins at home for both teams. Can't be more even than that. Yes. <laughs> I, be- yeah. I believe I believe. Um, 25-23 was the, was the goal scoring differential in favor of Texas. Four one-goal games, including a shootout. So give us a little scouting report on, on your, your, your native state Texas Stars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a great head-to-head series, but the Ice Hawks haven't seen them since the end of February. That's kind of the, the thing. It was one of the first Central Division, Division Rival series that came to a close as early as it did that didn't have to do any reschedulings or anything like that. But you mentioned, I mean, you hit the nail on the head that it, the game was so, the series was so split, four and four. They had they broke it up into two different, or four different two-game weekend sets, and those games were split. So no team has won multiple games in a row coming out of a weekend against each other. So that's what kind of is on the table now. As far as the Ice Hawks, they're that work ethic team. We talked a lot about the guys that you know play a little with, with you know have a hardworking mentality play with some grit to their game did you know discipline which lends to more you know two one three two contests they're not going to blow you away with seven or eight or nine goals like we've seen in the nhl playoffs already or at least like fast starts we've seen as for the texas stars though that is kind of their game they're they're a speed team and every time the ice Hawks play the stars whether it was this year or in seasons past it's always you know crash them up bang them up style of hockey that keeps the ice Hawks in those contests and, and staying physical with a lot of these speed teams and it's not just the stars that have this but 
but it's a lot of other you know clubs around the American Hockey League where their National Hockey League club is focused on on speed down the wing, speed up the middle, and, and controlling the puck and entering the attacking zone. So for the Rockford Ice Dogs, their biggest key tonight is is to you know manage the highs and lows of the game and catching up with the coaching staff because you know game one there's gonna be jitters all over the place with guys playing their first pro you know professional playoff hockey, but at the same time too they got to be physical but draw a line as well. Not to be overly physical, but it is playoff hockey. If they want to keep the stars back on their heels, they can't allow them to get speed, especially through the neutral zone. I think that's going to be the main battleground tonight is, is who can control the middle of the ice. And for the Ice Hogs recently, not just against the Stars, but against recent teams like Chicago, Milwaukee, Manitoba, Iowa, they've done really well in that department. So I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing how that plans out tonight. we got a whole lot more coming up with Joey Z, but we want to remind people that the best way to support CHGO is to download the PointsBet app and use that code CHGO when you sign up. If you do that right now, you'll get two risk-free bets up to $2,000, but that's not it. If you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content, and you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. That's $2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO locker, all for making a $50 or more first-time deposit at PointsBet. If you have any questions about this, email pointsbet at allchgo.com and we'll help you out pointsbet is your home for live in play betting and it just got even better introducing pointsbet's new feature live nba same game parlay for the first time ever you can build the perfect live nba same game parlay only with pointsbet want more you can also boost your live same game parlays watch live parlay live and boost live with pointsbet and remember online sign up is available right now in illinois so get out your phone Download that PointsBet app, and you can sign up from start to finish from your couch, from your shower, wherever you're at, you can do it start to finish. Super easy. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with PointsBet. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. We talked a lot about prospects, the young guys. Of course, those are the guys that Blackhawk fans are interested in the most, but... In order to win in the AHL, especially this time of year, you got to have those veterans. You got to have those career AHL guys, those guys that know what it takes. Ice Hogs have a few of those guys right now. They've had uh, a second time go around Ryan Stanton on the back end. He's kind of been more of a coach on ice, I'd like to say. You know, he's kind of taken a little bit of a backseat with the young guys playing. Uh, Brett Conley is another guy. He's unfortunately been injured. The so first part is if there's going to be any any update on, on if he'll be back for the postseason at all. And again, Captain Garrett Mitchell, the elder Mitchell on the team, kind of talk about his importance. He is, uh, you and I can both attest, talking to him many times, that guy is a future head coach in the waiting. Uh, he knows the game of hockey inside and out. And how huge is he going to be tonight of all nights, that first game? He's been through the battles. He's, he's had the, the long playoff runs when his time – in Hershey, how important is he going to be to kind of take these young guys right before that opening face off and say, hey, follow my lead. We got this. It's just another game. You actually, you hit the nail right on the head there, Greg, and, and that's exactly what I think a lot of the players and us, the staff, kind of gravitated towards. They're just like, okay, we have a young Ice Sox team. we got a lot of young guys that are playing their first you know, pro playoff games. Where do we turn to? What do we do? And everybody just kind of zooms in on Garrett Mitchell right there and Ryan Stanton. Those guys, they went to the Color Cup Finals with Hershey. I mean, when you look at this Ice Hog roster, they're, they're two of the, you know, and including Brett Conley, they're three guys that have the elder – you know, resume in terms of AHL playoff experience. And of course, Brett Conley, he's a Stanley Cup champion with the Washington Capitals a few seasons ago. So it's not every day you get a Stanley Cup champion, a guy that's won the ultimate prize in hockey at the highest level and, and you know, be able to relate to him. And he's been around the locker room despite being injured. And unfortunately, it looks like he'll still be missing some time. You'll have to wait on, in, you know, later rounds of the playoffs before you might be able to see him. But he's still been very present, involved. Garrett Mitchell, very present, involved. Ryan Stanton, same thing. And they're just, they're there to help because a lot of these guys, you know, we talked about the coaching staff saying, you know, manage the highs and lows of uh, and the energy of, of, of these games. And, and those are players on the ice that can, you know, wrangle you in a little bit. When you're feeling a little jittery, you feel a little anxious, you feel like you're putting more pressure on yourself than you deserve. That's something that uh, guys like Garrett Mitchell, Ryan Stan, Curtis Gabriel, who's been in the league for quite some time too, they can all help you out and, and guide that way. And, 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 and 
and in general, you mentioned it too, that in order to have success in this league, you got to have the right mixture of guys. I'm thinking back to the 2018 Western Conference Finals run. Who do they have that came down from the Blackhawks to help them out? They had Cody Franson on the blue line that was with Chicago that year, came down, helped out a lot of young friends, uh, prospects. Lance Boma, same thing. Blackhawks picked up Chris, Christy Domenico and Adam Clendenning that year to help out in terms of be a veteran guiding lights. And, and then they had Jeff Glass and Goal, who the Blackhawks fans probably remember as well. So, I mean, that was that was their galvanizing group that year. So this year, it's, it's Garrett Mitchell, it's Brett Connolly, Curtis Gabriel, Ryan Stanton, and and the list can continue to grow as you move forward. So they're they relied upon heavily, and, and that includes a staff and 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 players alike of of how to lead this team, especially in the best of three series when every shift, every period matters that much more because. You know, if you if you lose game one, you know, you're facing elimination right off the get go. If you win game one, you can push through and, you know, set yourself up for a nice weekend and get ready for the Chicago Wolves. Like we mentioned, that's uh, waiting on the other side now. So it's uh, it's going to be a lot of ebbs and flows and, and a lot of anxiety. And I'm feeling it right now. My hands are starting to get jittery and shivery as we feel it. But uh, for these guys, it's going to be a, a lot of uh, a lot of reliance on that veteran leadership to help get them through. I think Garrett Mitchell is a guy that Blackhawk fans are going to maybe hear a little bit more about. Not necessarily playing for the Hawks, but he's been the captain the last two seasons. They've already re-signed him to come back next year. So obviously they love that leadership he's providing to these young prospects. So this could be one of those guys that we, when he decides to hang up his skates playing, that we see as one of those player development yeah. coaches. Those guys that they're grooming into maybe furthering his career and staying with the organization. If he's important enough, if they like his leadership enough that they've already brought him back for next season, when mm -hmm. the Ice Hogs are going to be more important to this organization than they ever have been since the affiliation started, that speaks volumes to a guy like Garrett Mitchell and what he provides to a hockey organization. Well, especially now, too, like you're, you're dealing with the human element of, of players also. And Garrett can not only just relate to the game of hockey, but he can relate to you as a person. And how many times have we communicated with him and interviewed him? And, and you know, he's a smile on his face and, and kind of, you know, talks to you one on one. And, and even in that development locker room that I've seen here recently with Jared Nightingale, who's not too far removed from his playing career. Anders Sorensen's great at relating to players. We've got Eric Condra, the Blackhawks player development staff. He was a Texas star. Um, I don't quote me on it, but maybe even the last time they played him in the playoffs. So, I mean, Condra's not that far removed either. So you, you get guys like a Garrett Mitchell, as you mentioned, he's already resigned for next year that can relate to you on a hockey level, but it can also relate to you on a human level. And I think that's a big aspect too, because you can talk X's and O's all day and guys might, it just might not sink in, but when you can, you can talk to somebody person to person and, and be relatable in that aspect it's it, it takes it to another level and for and for garrett mitchell the, the hawks team captain here for the last couple of seasons uh that's been a major motivator for a lot of these guys i want to spend a little time on brett Connolly because like you mentioned a guy who's won a stanley cup who's got a lot of nhl experience for a guy with that much uh experience and, and that much accomplished in his pro career sometimes when veterans can get sent down to the minors just in general they can be kind of unhappy about it and be a little petulant and, and not helpful in any way. And if anything, almost a detriment. Everything we've heard about Brett Connolly this season has been nothing but praise about how he's handled the demotion and how he's handled the leadership role that he's been given. What has his impact been uh, on these young players? Because I think, you know, a lot of these guys see, wow, there he is. That, that He won a cup. You know, he's yeah. he's got rings. He's got all all the accomplishments. Like, what is his his specific impact been to the team this year? I mean, it, it's been amazing. And like guys, like like what Franson and those guys meant back in that 2018 run and that 2018 team, helping a lot of the youngsters that we see today. I mean, for Brett Connolly, especially uh, we you know going all the way back to the beginning of our conversation when talking about Lucas Reichel, there's a guy that Lucas Reichel can look up to, and they were on the same lines together. Reichel would either set him up or vice versa, just to see how Connolly is poised with the puck. He slows down. He thinks the game well. It's not anxiousness and 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 jitteriness all over the ice and, and trying to do too much. He makes it seem flawless and makes it seem simple. And I think for, for young guys to, you know, that are trying to do too much, maybe at, at certain times, he's a guy that they can look up to and, and just say like, he's, you know, he's able to just think the game the right way. And for Brett Connolly too, as, as a person, you're absolutely right. He's he, nothing but praise to it. And he admitted that, you know, coming down to the American Hockey League after spending so much time in the National Hockey League wasn't the greatest news, but 
I was lucky enough to be in the in the room when he was back up with the Chicago Blackhawks uh, in the, that most recent call up too, towards the what would you guys be shortly after the holiday season too. And he even admitted to everybody that you know he had more fun than he probably thought he would <laughs> with the with the Ice Dogs and just that group. And we've heard from similar stories from Alec Ragula and the like of of what this team meant and how tight knit of a group it is and and the battles that they go in together. So for a guy like Connolly to make those impacts on a Lucas Reichel, a Michael Tepley, an Andre Altbarmaki, and a Josiah Slavin, and uh, you know that entire forward group and and the group as an as a whole just because of, of his pedigree and the resume he comes in with is has been incredible and to have him around even when he's not playing to still make the drive up and 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 be here in the state line and and, and talk with guys whether it's at practice morning skate or even you know in the locker room in between periods if he needs to be he's he's very present in the moment and knows you know that he wants to be a part of this and and i think a lot of youngsters that uh that are looking to make their name in the National Hockey League and, and looking for a guy to look up to and, and who to be like as a player and as a person and how to treat people the right way. Brett Connolly is a great example. We had uh, we, we had Kyle Blackhawks general manager Kyle Davidson yesterday. We were at his end of the season press conference. And uh, of course, Derek King was a big topic. But he also had a, a high praise for Andre Sorensen, who took over for Derek when Derek got promoted to the Hawks. Uh, you know, kind of. A similar personality um, doesn't quite have the the stand up comedy act down that Derek <laughs> does, but has that calming <laughs> presence. Is not overexcited one way or the other. Uh, so when he is upset, you take notice, kind of like Derek. Mm-hmm. When when you when you have that post game sh- conference and you know he's pissed off, you know something went really wrong in order for him to get that way. Can you just talk about how big he's been and how he's progressed as well behind the bench to help him, you know, the Ice Hogs, a team that on paper may not be the most talented team, but somehow they have come together. They have gelled through a ridiculous season. And now here we are just a couple hours away from the playoffs. From my perspective, he's been incredible to work with. And then the communication that, that I've had with him is has been second to none. And and, and I think that's what's probably translated in, in my mind to this team. And and Andres calls it uh, connected hockey is, is, is his phrasing of, of getting everybody on the same page and working together. We're all pulling on the same rope together. And and, and and being able to be, again, relatable as a person and as a player. He's been in the development and, and as a development coach for many, many seasons. In fact, we have all the team photos up uh, just outside the locker room. And, and guys, they can see it anytime time they walk by the room and they see Anders right there, whether he was a development coach, an assistant coach or recently, or now the interim head coach with Rockford Ice Hawks. He's had a very physical presence uh, in this development of this team over the seasons and in the organization. And and for him to step right on in and 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 just jump in when when Derek got the call up at the very beginning of the season, the beginning of November there, it was, it was an opportunity that he was more than prepared for and ready to take on and Peter Aubrey going and joining him as an interim assistant coach, moving up from the goalie development and then bringing in Jared Nightingale, former player, former defenseman, able to come in and help out too. So for Andrew Sorensen to be, to be on that same level of like, of, of, of the hockey side, the personal side. And as you said, you know, he's very, he thinks the game well and he, and he chooses his words wisely, which is I've, I need to pick up his brain on that one for the broadcasts and stuff, just to how to pick pick and choose the right words at the right time because he's been excellent at it, and I think a lot of guys resonate to that well. And like you said, like if, if he's got something to say, people perk up and listen. He'll joke around with you. He'll you know smile on his face, have a good time. But when it's time to get down to business, uh, he means it, and, and he makes everybody know about that. Well, you spent a lot of time with Derek King, and this has been a topic we've had for a couple days here. You know, I think in a air quotes normal situation – If the interim head coach did not get the head coaching job, he'd probably look elsewhere to another organization. Do you feel like if 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 Kyle Davidson goes a different direction at head coach for the Hawks, do you think Derek King would have any problem returning to Rockford as a head coach? Do you think that would be something that he would uh, be happy to do, or do you think he'd say, "I want to be in the NHL in one way, shape, or form"? You know what? That's a, that's a good question. And I, I unfortunately don't have an answer for you on that one. I do know, I mean, I know I see Derek a lot because we live in the actual same neighborhood together. So when he commutes back and forth, I know his, his family is still in Rockford and, and goes to school in Rockford. But uh, I, I honestly don't know. And I think that's uh, there's a lot of questions. And I, I tuned into the Kyle Davidson press conference as well and was kind of curious to see just what was on tap. But uh yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I'm not too sure. I've, I haven't seen him in a while and, like, had a conversation in that regard other than, you know, I said, you know, his lawn's got to get cut every now and again or something, but uh, <laughs> something like that. But, um, no, that's a good question. I unfortunately just don't have an answer for you. It's just, there's something about his personality that makes me feel like he'd just be like, yeah, 
cool. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be in the organization. I appreciate the opportunity. And let me go back to what I was doing. I'm, he's obviously good at it. The, the players seem to really love him. Everyone who covers him loves him. So, you know, I, I just think he did a, he, I think he did a fine job in the interim. Yeah. Um, all things considered, in coming into a situation he described as fragile and broken, he put that back together and had that team playing like an NHL team, which is, it's crazy to say, but that to even reach that level with this team was impressive. Yeah, and, and, and Kyle had a, a spoke highly of Derek and said that he is the exact type of person you want in your organization. Mm-hmm. So while I'm not 100% sure being the full-time head coach is in his future, I definitely still think he's going to be part of this organization in some way, if he wants to be. Yeah, I uh, hope he does. And, I hope and he does. during that last conversation, I, I'm willing to, to bet that Derek King has a pair of grass-stained white New Balances somewhere in his house. <laughs> <laughs> well, this Absolutely. is he. I mean, I know his kids still play hockey quite a bit, and they had a backyard rink for a little while too. So, uh, no, he's he's very much ingrained in the Rockford community with his family being here. But he brought. His- I wish I, I wish I had his wit. That's the biggest thing. I mean, you yeah, know, when that's... you know guys under the weather, the, you know, the bad shrimp stuff. Like I remember all those quick comments here in, in Rockford, and then hearing him say those things up in Chicago was an absolute blast. It just kind of took me down. Uh, memory lane there a little bit but yeah i wish i wish i had his quick wit for sure well, we had him here in the studio a couple weeks ago he brought his very large adult son with yes. him uh like, can oh, this kid play for the hawks yeah. that would be wonderful <laughs> dj well yeah. he, i mean he was on a tryout for a little bit yeah, in, in training camp griffins, actually yeah, Derek yeah, King, I think yeah, he had a game uh, or two with the griffins large yeah. large adult son yeah he was yeah. a large <laughs> large human yeah it was cool um arvid soderbloom is a guy who's on the radar because uh, the Hawks just don't have a ton of depth in goal. Uh, and everyone, including Kyle Davidson yesterday, who has talked about his development, have has raved. Kyle did go a little bit uh, immediately to say he's probably not NHL ready right now. But uh, talk about what you've seen from Soderblom this season and his development. I've enjoyed watching him, and he's another guy that's come from overseas and, and, and that style of game to, to get used to smaller ice and a lot more shots for sure. Um, and he, he was already setting season-high records for himself uh, in the opening month of the season just with the amount of action he saw here in Rockford. But I think for him to, to work with goaltender coach and, and development coach Peter Aubrey, having Colin Gillier around and, and Kevin Lonkin in around, I'm sure his time with Chicago when Marc-Andre Fleury was present at that time had to be – instrumental for him to, to in his growth and for now at this point in the season going into April after the NHL trade deadline and, and he knew that you know Dealey was going up to, to back up Kevin Lonkin in the rest of the season that the net was his and it was his for the taking it wasn't you know split in time or anything like that and, and that he could develop a rhythm and a routine the only crazy thing was is that he played out of the 15 games in the month of April he played 13 of them and some of them were back-to-backs with four-hour bus rides in between so there's you know you, you talk about guys learning learning and developing right in the you know right getting tossed right into the fire, Arvid Soderblom's that case too. And then to have him up there, we saw flashes of what he could do in the National Hockey League. I know he came in in that January 1st game against Nashville, came in, uh, you know, got his first start in that following night against Calgary. Um, neither one of them came, you know, resulted in wins, but you saw little spurts here and there of how he composes himself in the net. He's not a flashy guy. He's not going to dive around and do the windmill saves and the full splits leg kickouts. He thinks the game very well. I mean, he's only 22 years old, about to be 23 coming up here this summer, but the way he acts and talks and, and, and works with his family when, he, when they come to the games, you would think he's, you know, mid to late 20s already, just the maturity of this guy and and, and to see that at that level. And I mean, I, I was lucky enough to be in the broadcast booth against that game in Calgary and he had, you know, a penalty shot go against him he had short hand breakaways go against him he had plenty of chances uh to where he you know might feel like well here's nhl shooters coming and bearing down on me and he made it look like it was a, it was a casual night out with the rockford ice Hogs. so uh so for arvid's growth it's, it's going to be him and, and they're going to rely on him heavily in the postseason and and kale morris too i mean he was a guy that with COVID 19 protocols and everything that kind of got thrust upon him last season and this season uh, a guy that was you know the big 10 goalie of the year mike richter award winner and at the college ranks at notre dame and and was patient last season didn't get a whole lot of action with the ice hogs and then this year helping out arvid and colin has been huge i mean he just set the the ice hogs rookie goalie mark for saves in a single game with i mean he made 51 incredible stops against the chicago wolves which after he set the previous record the last start he ha- would have too so i mean kale morris is in that pipeline and and has been fantastic so between those those two this playoff year it, it's going to be fun but for Robert Soderblom he seems like that next guy that's that just needs that repetition he needs that day-to-day he needs that every everyday opportunity to to get better and get between the goalposts and and he's taking this season and I look forward to see what uh what's coming around for this playoffs and, and into the summer 
I know we have a real limited sample size with him in, in Chicago, but similar size to Corey Crawford, plays in that a similar way. Joseph, as you mentioned, not a real acrobatic, you know, Dominic Hasek diving all over the place, positionally sound. And that's what made Corey Crawford so good was he was always in the right spot. And sometimes fans would see like, well, look, he had no chance on that rebound shot. He didn't dive to try to get over to it. Well, that's going to happen when you're when you're such a positionally based goalie. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but have you either of you guys sort of noticed uh, a, kind of a physical similarity between Corey Crawford and Soder Bloom and and stylistically as well? That's a good question. Um, I mean, he's definitely. A, I, I can't say I remember seeing Corey too recently off the top of my head to go back and, and maybe do a side by side. But I know for Arvid, yeah, he, I mean, he's very technical and I think he relies on that a lot. And there's a lot of chances with the amount of shots he gets traffic in front of him that he relies on those technicalities to help him out. I don't know how many times he's had pucks go off the shoulder pads or off the leg pads, or even just off the ankles, just because he was in the right place at the right time and, and knew, you know, where the high probability, high danger chances would be. And, 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 you know, if there was a deflection, where could it possibly go? And, but he also sees the ice very well too. It's not just where the puck is, but he's very situationally aware of, of his surroundings and, and who's in what position he communicates with the defenseman rather well. He plays the puck well too, to try and help him out as well. So, I mean, for Arvid Soderblom to be that technical at that young an age and, and to have this experience this year, I think this year was a building block. So now coaching and him can kind of go back on the season you know, look at what went well, look at what didn't go well for him, and then build off of that is is going to be a huge stepping stone for this playoffs too because he's playing meaningful hockey where you can play. I mean, we saw some games that went the distance here recently in the National Hockey League playoffs where he might be put into a similar situation, and then in the American Hockey League, you know, game two, game three, whatever the series is, that's right around the corner, if not the very next day. So I think uh, for him to get those meaningful games under his belt too will, will be a, a big part of his uh, development. Yeah, well, that's a great – Goalie scouting report from a f- former goalie. I wouldn't expect any less from you, Joey. Um, College club level in Texas, the the peak of performance. Hey, you you and you and Jason Shaver, you guys got it. You got it down. Uh, you guys are my goal, my goalie guys. Uh, but you, you, the comparison to Crawford, it's I think it's fair. Um, there, he's Arvid is is a lot. He's calm in the crease. Mm-hmm. I think we've watched enough games over the past couple of weeks with Kevin Langan and Colin Delia where they are not as calm in the net sometimes. <laughs> they get a little adventurous. They go swimming, as I like to call it, where Arvid doesn't do that as, as much. And he's been under fire a lot this season. I think, you know, he they, the Ice Hogs' shot suppression is not their greatest aspect to their game. Um, they, they give up a lot of shots. You know, they, they tend to – they're okay with, hey, you can give up, you know, those, those high percentage shots from, from the outsides, but – He's calm in the crease, and it doesn't seem, even in those games where he's getting bombarded and he's facing 20 shots in a period, nothing really seems to frazzle him. So that's where I think the the Crawford comparison come in. Even when he gives up that bad goal, he's right back in there and he makes a big save on the next shot, and that's key, uh, especially this time of the season from a young goalie. It's exciting, man. We're excited to start watching tonight. Remember, if you want to check out the action, you can listen. Uh, the Rockford Ice Hogs website. You can download the AHL TV app on your uh, laptop or on your uh, Roku stick or Fire Stick or whatever and subscribe to that uh, playoff package. Every AHL playoff game is available to you. Joseph Zakseski, thank you so much for joining us here on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. We appreciate it. And hopefully we got a bunch more rounds coming up that we can uh, talk to you again and preview as the Ice Hogs move through the Calder Cup playoffs, man. We appreciate your time. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, guys. It's good to see you again. And, uh, yeah, go Ice Hogs. Look forward to everyone joining us here at the BMO, here for this series against the Stars, or if you're able to, we'd love to have you tune in. Thank you, guys. All right. See you Friday, Joey. Thank you, buddy. See you soon. All right. That was awesome, awesome stuff. Hopefully we get a lot more time with Joseph before the end of the playoffs. Yeah, let's hope they make a run. That means the Ice Hogs are, are, are playing, and we need as much playoff excitement here as possible uh, the Ice Hogs are going to be looking for that competitive edge tonight in game one against the D- Texas Stars. And if you're looking to start your day with a competitive edge, you should definitely check out Strav- Strava CBD Coffee because, as we've said many times, it's a game changer and it's helped thousands of people improve their overall wellness and quality of life. And who doesn't want more of that? Strava delivers delicious, fresh roasted specialty coffee infused with organic broad spectrum CBD 
CBD, CBD doesn't make you high or hungry, but it does give you a, a, a ton of benefits that will help you out in your day. You're going to feel That's alert great. and focused without the jitters from a, from a freshly brewed cup of coffee. You're going to live your day more balanced with less anxiety and fewer aches and pains. <sighs> Sign me up yes, for that. Yes, sir. Plus, including CBD in your daily routine can even help you enjoy more restful sleep. So you wake up feeling your best and then you brew yourself some CBD infused Strava coffee and you're going to feel even better folks. This has it all. It's not only amazing tasting coffee, but it also gives you all the benefits of full spectrum CBD and to make it even better. CHGO listeners can save 25% off their order by typing in the promo code CHGO25 at checkout. That's 25% off your entire order at StravaCraftCoffee.com. That's S-T-R-A-V-A Coffee.com when you use that CHGO25 promo code at checkout. And if you're already a fan of Strava Coffee, and you should be, both of us are. We, yes, sir. We love it. It's a fantastic product. Uh, you can also save and by subscribing and becoming a member of the Strava Coffee Club. That's where Strava puts you in control. You can save on all your favorite coffees and have them automatically delivered to your home or office when you want it to be. It doesn't get any easier than that. We love our friends over at Strava Craft Coffee. Yes, we do. An amazing product. I love Absolutely. coffee. Uh, coffee loves me. <laughs> I love hemp. Hemp loves me. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a relationship uh, that's just meant to be. I It's perfect. Uh, you know what does make me jittery is the fact that the Rockford Icehogs defense does not suppress shots very well. Well, you know, <laughs> they are part of the Blackhawks yeah. organization after I guess, all. Uh, so, you know, like father, like son? Is that the... Yeah, that yeah. acorn didn't fall <laughs> too far from the bad defense tree. Yeah, uh, yeah it's just yes. good practice for when they come up. Exactly. That's, <laughs> how, that's how they ease them right into the Blackhawks system. Maybe so. it's how you get your goalies ready. Hey, you got to get used to getting shelled every night and so exactly. you, get, you know how to handle uh, more, the more, 60 shots on goal. The more you face 85 <laughs> shots a night, the more you'll be prepared to play at the United Center. Uh, speaking of 85 shots a night... Hey we, had some, we had some hockey going on in the NHL last night. Ooh, We're going to sure do our do. Uh, our daily catching up with the Blackhawks in the playoffs. Uh, January's with us in the chat. I'm glad she's okay. I'm glad she's healthy. Uh, Rangers lose 4-3 in triple overtime to the Panthers. And, uh, man, what a game that was. Overtime, You t I don't know if you texted me or if it was in the Slack. Overtime is nuts. There were so many scoring opportunities yeah. for both teams uh but the penguins they win four three and they take game one from the rangers yeah that was quite the thing uh rangers had a an early lead two nothing i believe it was and then kind of coughed it up and then in midway through the second overtime um Already on their backup goalie, Casey DeSmith, he leaves with an injury of some sort. Might have been cramping. I didn't get an update today on that. But uh, then comes in Louis Domingue, uh, who's <laughs> played two a NHL games all season long. Yep. And he gets the win. Uh, and he was pretty crazy. good yeah. and tested. They peppered him right off the yes. bat. And he made saves. He was giving up some Kevin Lincoln and S. rebounds yeah. there. But fortunately <laughs> for the Penguins, nobody in blue <laughs> Was anywhere near to cash them in. I know January is a huge Rangers fan. Uh, but They'll be all right. It, it was fun to see. Uh, one thing that was a little um, concerning, um, Artemi Panarin, everybody's favorite ex-Blackhawk, yes. in almost 32 minutes of ice time, had just two shots on goal. That doesn't seem to be enough. And seven giveaways. Oof. That's... Uh, I think they're going to need the bread man to be a little better than that if they want to keep going. As yeah. January says, not great, Bob. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't great uh, for the Rangers. But it was an enter it enter the game entertained the hell out of me, I guess say that. So Hey, give me seven of those, give me, please. Exactly. Let's go more. When the, when the your team isn't in it, I want every game to go to overtime. Yeah. I love NHL playoff hockey in overtime when it doesn't involve a team. I, I'm going to, you know. I've lost probably seven to twelve years of my life. Oh, definitely because of those Blackhawk runs and those playoff games. Barf, but cry, die time. I figure those are the last seven to twelve years of my life, and you can have them. Igor Shesterkin, the Rangers stud goalie, uh, seventy-nine saves in the loss. That is the second most saves in a playoff game in NHL history. That's, that is 
that's remarkable. He was terrific. Um, he slept like a baby last night, oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you hear, by the way, Louis Domingue, after the game, say he had like a big meal yeah. after the first overtime? Spicy pork Spicy and pork. broccoli, I heard. Yeah, that was – And they, I think what they ask him, how was it? He goes, eh, it wasn't that good. Not good. <laughs> Just imagine, like, eating spicy pork and then having to go play goalie. Ugh, yeah. like the, Nothing like a spicy – Pork and broccoli burp Ooh. as a the old, yeah the old man in me is like is feeling coming. that heartburn for sure <laughs> oh the delicious brutal. no no stress or heartburn coming in in the middle of a second Ugh. overtime period either gross uh, we had oh that was an upset Penguins over the Rangers that was the three over the two speaking of upsets yeah President Trophy winning Florida Panthers kind of laid an egg well they didn't kind of they totally laid they an egg on home ice losing four to those pesky Washington Capitals. Uh, the only uh, notable ex-Blackhawk there was defenseman Gustav Forsling. He was a plus two, so he was on the ice for both Panthers' goals and not on the ice for a goal against, so good for him. But, yeah. uh, you know, the Capitals steal game one. They're going to need to rebound down there in Florida. I'm not worried about the Panthers. No. Uh, they never. are my Stanley Cup pick on points bet and on my bracket challenge. By the way, if you want to get in our bracket challenge, apparently it's still open. Like, okay. you've got to get the picks in before tonight's game. So go to NHL Bracket Challenge. Uh, use the code FLOWER to enter and join our league. Uh, just search CHGO Blackhawks League, and you'll find us. The, the keyword is FLOWER, and get in before tonight's puck drop, and you'll be good to go. Um, not worried about the Panthers. The Caps are a challenge because they are so battle-tested. Yeah. Their playoff games don't phase them, right? They've been through so many of them. They have no pressure to win this year. All the pressure's on the Florida Panthers. And like we've said, you know, we saw the Hawks as big-time favorites come out in a series and look really slow to start. The Panthers, to me, are the best and most complete team in the league. Maybe after last night, I'm starting to lean that way towards Colorado, but we'll get to that. Um, they're going to be fine. It's going to be a great series. Um, and I'm excited to watch the rest of it, man. And No one should panic. January, it's okay. The, the Rangers will probably be okay. I think the Panthers are going to be fine. A lot of favorites lost that game one. Tampa Bay Lightning, they're not panicked. No. I mean, again, remember, the Blackhawks' first game of the 2010 playoffs, they lost to Nashville. Yep. Uh, they lost that for opening series. What is it, 2015 to Nashville, too? They they struggled. Yep. So maybe sometimes those best teams, you know, the Panthers have kind of been on cruise control for a couple of weeks. You got to shake that, that off. They had that division. Sometimes you need to get smacked in the side of the head to get a wake-up call, and I expect them and Tampa to fully come out in their second games and look much better. And speaking about those Predators. Speaking of smacked in the head. Well, they weren't smacked <laughs> in the head. They wish they were just smacked in the head. Uh, boy, the Panthers were just assaulted. It was yes. a crime. The Colorado Avalanche just took it out and waved it at them last night and and just 7-2 to two beat. That game was over. Instantly, Quick. yes. Uh, the, the Avalanche, to show you how grossly talented they are, they, they went with seven defensemen and put up seven goals. Uh, they obviously have some defensemen that can play, like Colin McCarr. He's good. He's all right. Um, By know. the way, I was watching uh, In the Crease this morning on ESPN, and they showed the McCarr goal over and over again. Oh then they're like, hey, remember this one? Yeah, oh. The one where he scored against the Hawks, where he left Kirby Dock in the dust? Yeah. Uh. Kirby Dock's rafter, or jock is still <laughs> yeah. in the rafters. Do we I mean, have to... You Barry Melrose, can we not? Can we not show that again? Thanks. Yeah. Can we not show Barry Melrose anymore either? Oh, he's got nothing left in the tank, man. He didn't have a whole very. Big I think tank to begin he with. watches the games as the highlights are playing and then reacts. Yeah. He was asked flat out, like, "What did the Capitals do in this game to beat the Panthers?" Like, they have veterans. They like, scored more goals. Great, thanks, yeah. Barry. Thanks for the in-depth analyst there. You, you, whatever. And he also, yeah, we'll not get into it. He sits. <laughs> he sits away where things are visible. And I don't need that. I just don't. Put a graphic there. Put a lower third over that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. You know I, what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I not, know what you're saying. He's not aesthetically pleasing. Well, in just, other words, fly. You know, I don't need that in my life ever. Hey, but hey, shout out to DNVR, our friends uh, in the All City Network. There, they're having fun. Seven to two. That's yeah. You know, that's an impressive. They're one. having a good time. Um, they're happy. You know, must be nice. The Predators, uh, you really hate to see a team, you know, oh, su man. such a classy organization oh, yeah. like that. I and hate the fans around, is great. Yeah. They really know the game. Yeah, they're, they're, you really hate to see that. It makes my heart bleed. And, it's uh, terrible. Don't worry, Predators. You got three more butt kickings, and then you can go <laughs> golfing with the Blackhawks. It'll be all good. Um, 
Poor there trash. Any, uh, hawks in that one? In there were no hawks on oh, either man. team, so uh, we don't have to pay too much more close attention to that. But we can point and laugh at Nashville. That's allowed. All right, and then uh, the final game, our buddy Nikita Zadorov <laughs> and, the, and the Flames beat the Stars one nothing. Dallas had 16 shots on goal the entire game. Not good. Was it? Did the either the Rangers or Penguins had 25 shots in a period yeah. last night? The Stars had 16 shots in the game. That's how this series is going to go. Two really solid defensive teams. They're going to be low scoring. I think Calgary is so much better than Dallas. I think they're going to win this series pretty easily. I'm, 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 I'm really into the Flames this year because to me, Those uniforms. Well, well, the uniforms first and foremost are just spectacular. And the more I see the way Kyle Davidson is building the Blackhawks, mm-hmm. and I want to ask him this yesterday, but I failed to. I feel like he's kind of looking at that as a model. Well, yeah. Of an attainable. They're not. They have a. Johnny Gaudreau is fantastic. Matthew Kachuk is fantastic, of course. But a lot of the rest of the team is like just really solid, uh, high energy, straight ahead ass kickers. Right. And, And that's how you build a playoff team. And that's why I think you look at Tampa, you look at Florida, you look at Colorado. That's kind of the A tier of the playoff teams. And then right at the top of that second tier to me is Calgary. Calgary is going to be a tough out. Yeah. They've got a lot of big, fast, mean guys. You know, don't underestimate what a guy like Blake Coleman is going to bring to that team. He's He might have been that final puzzle piece that they needed. His pe- Blake Coleman, in a nutshell, go watch the highlights, gets in front of the Dallas net, cross-checks a dude, gets the puck and scores, but he's called for interference. The goal's waved off. But there's Blake Coleman. Yeah. That's the sort of guy you need to win playoff series. Yeah. I'm going to kick your ass, and I'm going to score. Yeah. Stan- That's why uh, Stanley Cup champion. Number 65 right there on our table, Andrew Shaw. Yep. Those are the sort of guys. Every team's got their star players, but it's when you fill a roster with guys like that and guys like Blake Coleman, that's the difference between Cup and not Cup. Yeah, the Flames, they've, got that, they've got that deep, tough roster, and then they got one of them, maybe the most underrated goalie yeah. in the league. Yep. And Jacob Markstrom, tremendous goalie, led the league in shutouts. Yeah. And what did he do last night? I mean, he wasn't tested very often, but he made all the saves. Uh, Zadorov, we mentioned him. He had three hits and two penalty minutes, no points. So that was a Nikita Zadorov type. How many night. hand grenade passes did he leave? Is that is that all, on the stat All sheet? of them. <laughs> uh, no Ryan Carpenter. He was a healthy scratch. Oh, That's Carpy deuces. Yeah. Which is kind of surprising. You know, he's a guy that is made for playoff hockey. He's He he was part of that Vegas Golden Knight team that yep. made it to the final. Um, he's got the experience, so maybe he gets in a game or two here. The thing that I got, speaking of Vegas, and as if you've watched our, our episodes here, you know that them missing the playoffs just tickled me silly. I loved every second of it. Uh, speaking of Vegas, when I'm watching last night, I'm watching Dallas and I'm watching the Predators. I'm going, how the hell did Vegas not finish ahead of those two teams? It's but, amazing. You know, Such a shame. It is. It's <laughs> terrible, um, you know, and, and I'll, I cry myself to sleep every night wishing for their annoying social media guy to be in the playoffs. But, uh, oh, well. Oh, well. Enjoy salary cap hell, Las Vegas. Yeah, it's a shame. All right, that recaps uh, to last night's action. Uh, more games tonight, so make sure you're tuned in. And remember, the Ice Hogs dropped the puck at 7 o'clock against Texas. Sign up for that AHL TV. Do yourself a favor. And if you enjoy CHGO, one way to help us continue to grow is to download the Points Bet app and use that code CHGO when you sign up. Not only are you going to get two risk-free bets up to $2,000, but if you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership. That unlocks all of our web content, and you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. And remember, online sign-up is available now. In Illinois, you can actually download the PointsBet app right now and sign up start to finish. It's awesome. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with PointsBet. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. A little bit of a programming note will be on tomorrow at 1.30. But Monday, we got in-studio guest Colby Cohen. Should be Hawks great. analyst will be in studio with us on Monday. So we're really looking forward to that. So mark your calendars. And uh, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube page. Make sure you hit that follow button. If you see a live broadcast, you're watching it, hit that like button on every video. All that stuff helps. Subscribe to the podcast, right? The CHGO Blackhawks podcast, Bulls, Fire, White Sox, Sky, Red Stars, Cubs, Bears, 
if it's a Chicago team, they've got a podcast, subscribe to it. Turn on those notifications so you know when new episodes drop. We all do five shows a week, and it's awesome. So those are some of the ways you can help us out at CHGO Sports. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Thanks to Lawrence for producing the show. Follow Craig Boyson on Twitter. Lovely. I was going to ask for that today, and I forgot. Oh, oh we got two blows. It just what? keeps going. Way to teach your own horn, Lawrence. <laughs> Free. All right. Oh, God, Lawrence, we're out of time. Okay. Yeesh. Follow Greg on Twitter at Greg Boyce, and I'm at Jay Zawoski. Uh, Mario is at Mario underscore Tirabasi. Follow him. He'll be back soon. By the way, I'm going to be on the CHGO Sports Show tomorrow at 1232, so check that out. And we will have Ice Hogs talk tomorrow. Yes. And Blackhawks postseason awards. That should be fun. Cannot wait. We'll talk to you tomorrow, 130, on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.